back to my channel. As you can see by the title of this video, I have hit a massive, massive milestone. I have lost 100 pounds. Technically I've lost 101, but I've lost 100 pounds. I am... I, I'm speechless. I don't even know the words to explain what that means to me. Although strap in because I think I've got about like 45 minutes of footage coming up for you. Uh, sorry, I don't post often, but when I do, it's monstrously long. Anyways, I am just, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so proud. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. There's so many emotions pinging around inside of me. If anybody is new to my channel, I had gastric bypass on August 30th of 2019. So I'm just about nine months out from surgery, if I'm counting the months properly. Uh, and I have lost, as I said, 100 pounds in that time. I'm not done yet. I am still working on my weight loss journey, but things have definitely slowed down. That's fine. I truly feel like I'm up to the challenge at this point. I'm going to talk about that more in what follows, but I'm just so happy to share this milestone with you guys and let's just get straight into the video. All right, as always with these sort of get ready with me kind of videos, I'm not going to talk about the products as I'm applying them because I will just get completely off topic, but I am going to list them all down below in the description box. So if you're interested in any particular step along the way, just look down there and the product should be listed if I remember to do my job and actually fill in my description box. All right, let's just dive straight into this. I, I've been sitting on the knowledge that I have reached this 100 pound milestone now for a couple of days. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you will have seen posts regarding that. I just applied altogether way too much primer, but that's okay, we'll make it work. Um, and for whatever reason, I didn't post it here on my community tab, I guess because I knew that ultimately I was going to do this video and I didn't really want to like rain on my own parade, if that makes sense. Um, but as you can probably tell if you're an actual subscriber of my channel, I haven't been so good with the uploads lately. I'm trying to find balance, basically. And the thing that has been sort of shoved to the, pa to the back burner, I guess, is my channel, unfortunately. And it makes me sad, but I'm just, I'm doing the best that I can. Um, however, that being said, it's taken me a few days to sort of digest the magnitude of what that really means in any event. Like, obviously I knew it was coming because you see the number, you know, go down on the scale and you know how much further away from the starting point you are. When I did my bathing suit video, I think I was at 99 pounds gone at that point. So, I mean, although I didn't know exactly when I would hit the 100 pounds, I knew it was very soon. But still, to see the number on the scale and to know, I've actually surpassed it. I'm at 101 pounds at this point. But to see that is just... I don't even know the word to describe the emotions that I feel. Like it's, I'm proud of myself, I'm ecstatic, I'm relieved, I'm excited, I'm mind blown. I Like there's just so many different emotions that come along with that. And I'm just here to soak them all up, to be honest. I, I'm just so thrilled. At any rate, what I had originally thought about doing was like, like a picture montage, I guess. And doing almost like, remember when like draw my life videos were all the rage? Uh, except I can't draw to save my life. So I was just gonna do it with pictures and like do a voiceover and just sort of talk about my journey to weighing over 300 pounds and then my journey on back down. Um, and then it just kind of got away from me. And honestly, in that video, what I had planned on doing was the last shot was going to be me going down a slide with Bennett on my lap. If you're new to my channel, he is my freshly turned three-year-old. And when I started this whole weight loss surgery process, 
one of my biggest motivations was this desire to be able to go down a slide with my son on my lap because I never got to do that with my daughter. Um, so I was going to close it out with that. And then, and then the thing happened. The thing which shall not be named because apparently if you name it, YouTube will take your video down as they did to me in a recent live stream because we said the C word. Uh, and not that C word. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The one that's causing us all to stay inside. So our parks in our area are all shut down and you risk a very significant fine if you break the barriers that they've put up. Uh, and it's to the tune of like over $800, like I wanna say about 850, something like that. Um, and I'm not willing to risk not only my health and that of my son, but also an $850 fine for the sake of, you know, a shot of me going down the slide with my son on my lap. It'll happen when it happens. When it does, I will be happy to share it at that point but it's not gonna work its way into this video. It is what it is. So I just wanted to sort of rejig the video idea then because I couldn't really think of like a good ending picture or video. You know what I mean? Regardless, go with me on this. I changed my mind on my approach. And so what I thought that I would do instead is revisit a video that I posted on the day of my surgery and in that video, I talked about the things that I was looking forward to for life after surgery. So I thought that I would just, as I put my face together here, sort of review what it was that I was looking forward to and then just sort of update you and let you know if I've accomplished those things. If not, why not, where I'm at, all of that kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I need to set that. I have setting powder somewhere. Here we go. So the first thing that I said I was looking forward to was no more sleep apnea because I was diagnosed with severe sleep apnea about two to three weeks before I had my surgery. I had to meet with this particular doctor as part of my surgical team and he sent me for a sleep study which is the first circle of hell. It's horrible. Uh, if you ever have to do one I already feel sorry for you because it's awful. It's horrible. Uh, but I survived and my diagnosis was <laughs> severe sleep apnea. So I was fitted with a CPAP mask and machine and all of that and I hated it. I hated it the first night I had to wear that mask. I cried. It was awful. I wanted it gone. I am extremely happy to report that I sleep like a bloody baby now and my CPAP has been returned. I no longer wear the mask. I don't have sleep apnea anymore. I wake up for the most part feeling rested. As I said, I can now sit in a car and not be immediately falling asleep. Um, and I just feel like I have a deeper sleep. Like I just, I feel so much better. And Part and parcel with that as well is prior to the surgery, I was experiencing a lot of hip pain to the point where I had to have x-rays and ultrasounds and an MRI and all sorts of crap done. Um, and they found that there was some like degeneration happening in the hip joint itself. I don't have that hip pain anymore. I do not feel any of that. Um, no matter how long I've been sitting, standing, walking, anything, it does not flare up. So that was, like really impeding my sleep and now it doesn't so it's incredible sort of tying in with that the second thing that I was talking about was just having more energy and not aching as much and I was saying in that video that I did back in August was that I wanted more energy not only just for myself but also to spend with my kids and gave the example of like walking to the park and how I was very resistant to doing so because I knew how much it would hurt me and for how long. My feet would hurt, my ankles would hurt, I had a lot of heel pain, my knees would ache, and then for the entire next day my entire you know back and lower body would just ache just from the exertion of walking to and around the park. The number of times I actually managed to, excuse me, get to the park and then just sit on a bench because I didn't have the energy to 
run around or even walk around. Like I can't even count that on my fingers. Um, and I'm happy to say that although we're not able to go to the park right now, <laughs> thank you pandemic, um, I can certainly go on walks. I mean, I ended up adopting a dog in September, sweet Luna, um, because I was walking so much. So that is definitely a thing of the past. I have so much more energy. I am just so thrilled about that. I, it's, I'm so grateful for that, that I'm not like ready to go to bed at noon every day, like between improved sleep quality and just not having to lug around an extra hundred pounds on my frame. It, it's amazing. I can run up and down stairs. I'm not winded. I don't hurt. I don't have to stop halfway. Like it's, it's incredible. The third thing that I was talking about, again, kind of goes hand in hand with this having more energy. And at that time I was talking about going to the rec center or the gym, um, doing lane swimming, doing fitness classes, working out, all that kind of stuff. Those are of course closed as well, so I can't do that. Um, but I have started a learn to run program and I'm very, very proud of myself for that. And I have now just completed the third week of an eight week program. It's just an app that I downloaded and there's a ton of them out there. Um, mine is from Fitness 22. I can't even remember what it's called. I think it's just like couch to 5K or something along those lines. And I really like it because it like just plays in the background so I can still listen to Spotify, but then it'll like ding when the intervals happen. So the first week it was like one minute of walking, one minute of running and it would just like give a little ding and it'd be like, start running, slow down and walk. Like it's just, it's really helpful. So I'm now up to running like three minutes and then walking two minutes or something. I can't remember exactly what the intervals are. The program is effective and I'm just, I can't believe it. Like I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I look forward to it instead of thinking in my mind, like, ugh, I have to run today. I'm like, I get to run today. Today's running day. And Granted, I probably spend more time walking in the program than I do running at this point. I still call it a run and I still love it. Like I'm just, I love it. And I'm just so proud of myself for doing it. And I'm just so amazed that I can do it because this time last year, I like literally couldn't run. The fat on my body would bounce up and down. Like I literally could not run, um, nor did I have any desire to do so. Uh, but now, here we are, and I'm just so excited about it. Um, sounds like a weird thing. Like, if you had asked me a year ago about, like, do you think you'd ever be excited to run? I'm like, no. If there was somebody chasing me with a knife, I would still just turn around and take my chances. Like, I don't run. And yet, here I am. So, it's really changed a lot in my life. Not just the weight loss, but, like, just knowing that I can accomplish things once I put my mind to it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so the next thing that I was excited about was not having to worry about weight limits because I've spent quite a few years always having to look up what the maximum weights of things are. So camping chairs, um, rides at places, things like that. I've always been sort of limited by what their max capacity is um, to the point where I've even like went on an elevator being like, Am I risking everybody else's health and safety by being on here? Uh, like it's a horrible, it, I'm saying it in a flippant way, but it's, it's a horrible feeling to think I shouldn't sit on that chair because it might literally like just explode underneath me. Uh, and I'm happy to report that I don't really think about them anymore because the majority of them are about 30 pounds more than what I weigh. So I feel like there's a good cushion there. And it's so freeing not to have to worry about that. Like if I wanted to buy a camping chair for the summer, I can just buy a camping chair. I don't have to look for the one that has like the heavy duty friggin' titanium skeleton structure thing of it. Um, whatever frame, I guess would be the word, not skeleton. Thanks for coming out, Kara. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like it just, it's very, very freeing. And the next thing that I was talking about was having more confidence in myself and 
not like having to like pull up my clothes and try to hide everything that's going on. And I was talking in specific about my double chin as well. Although I think I mentioned that, yeah, that's a separate one, whatever, we'll lump them together. Um, I'm going to try if I can, I'm sure I can figure it out, but I'm going to try to insert some before and after pictures just so that you can see <laughs> what it is that I'm talking about. Um, Cause even watching my video from last summer, I don't recognize myself. I can't believe I spent so much time in that body. And I'm just so grateful not to be there anymore. Um, in terms of self-confidence, I mean, leaps and bounds from where I was. Just leaps and bounds. I, I mean, it's not like I walk around strutting like a peacock thinking that I'm, you know, God's gift to this earth. But I, I don't feel ashamed to take up the space that I take up. I don't know how to describe what it is I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, like, I don't, I don't feel like people are judging me and that people are like, oh, wow, you're the largest person in this facility. Like, I just feel very normal and I'm so, so grateful for that. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, it hasn't, in some regards, it's completely changed my life. And in other ways, like, I'm still me. My personality is still the same. I'm still sarcastic and witty and all that kind of thing. Um, I still care too much what people think of me. Um, but I'm just far less critical of myself, and I think that just translates overall into being more confident. Um, I totally forgot to do like any sort of blush or highlighter contour or anything. We'll get there. I'll do it. Um, oh, when I was talking about like losing the jaw and all that kind of stuff, I certainly have. I mean, it's not perfect, but like I have a jawline. It's I'm very happy with the changes in my face. But when I was talking about it in my video from the summer, uh, I was also saying like, I didn't have any specifics in mind in terms of what size I wanted to get to or any of that kind of thing. And I was like, you know, I haven't been below a size 20 in so long. Um, and I was only a size 20 for a few months after I had my son that I just can't picture being any smaller. I started off as um, size 24, 26 really um, but I was resistant to going up to that point but I did have quite a few number like size 26 items um so I was a size 26 I now have a little bit of a mixed bag depending on the brand and the cut of things and all that kind of stuff but like I have two pairs of jeans from American Eagle Outfitters that are size 16 and they fit beautifully. I have a jean skirt from Old Navy. It's a size 16. Fits beautifully. Like a little tiny bit on the tight side, but to the point where like the 18s are too big. So it's incredible. It's incredible. It's still at the point where like when I pick my jeans up, I'm like, there's who the hell's are these? These must be like my, my husband's because <laughs> they look so narrow. Um, but they're mine and they fit and it's just the craziest, craziest thing. And I love it so, so much. And I recently tried on my size 26 jeans. <laughs> they fall down um, without having to wiggle or anything like that. The minute I let them go, they just go whoop. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Getting back into this, the next thing that I had talked about in my video was saying like I was super excited to be able to buy bras in store and of course while I cannot go to a store right now I have actually shrunk down enough cup sizes that I can buy in a store. Maybe not like um, Lacenza or anything like that but Additionnel sells my size and that's where I've, I've bought like a ton of bras again if you follow me on Instagram you've seen me in a bra probably more than you care to <laughs> but I just felt so pretty in them um but yeah like I at that time in the video I sorry I have my notes in front of me um I was talking about you know like getting a breast reduction all this kind of stuff I still want to do that but at that time I was an H cup 
I am now a G cup, but can also fit into an F cup. If I get like a band size larger, an F cup fits. And that is awesome. It's so good. Um, Cause even the size that I was at last summer wasn't the highest I've ever been. The highest I've ever been was 328 pounds and I was 316 last summer. When I was close to 330, I was wearing an I cup bra. Mm, they're really hard to come by. Uh, so I'm very, very happy that they've shrunk. I'm so happy about that. Um, and then I only had one other thing and I was talking about buying new clothes from non plus size stores. And I don't know that I've really, like I certainly haven't gone into the malls or anything and they're all closed now anyways, but just being able to buy size 16 has opened up so many doors. Like when I shop online, I usually am no longer in the plus size section of the store. Um, I can shop, especially like Old Navy. It's just I tend to buy most of my stuff from there because they ship in Canada. They're cheap. They're whatever. And they've got a good selection. Um, but I don't have to shop from their plus size. I can shop from their regular clothes and they fit really well. Um, and that just opens up such a wider variety of options and I'm so grateful for that. I think what I'll do is the rest of the face stuff and then I'll do like liner and lashes offline, um, off camera, not offline, off camera. But we'll finish up our conversation while I'm doing like blush and contour and all that kind of thing. Okay, eyes are done. I realized I said that I was gonna do my face and then go back and do my eyes and I was like, why don't I just finish my eyes now, so that's what I did. Uh, so we're gonna move on to finishing up my face. Um, so in my video, I had said like, have any of you, you know, lost a significant amount of weight and was there any like unexpected benefit or you know, like pro or con basically, was there any downside to it that you weren't expecting? And so I thought that I'd kind of share a few little ones of my own. Um, primarily that I don't miss the behavior or the foods that I can no longer eat. There aren't many that I can no longer eat, but there are some that my body just, just can't handle. And I find out pretty quickly when my body can't handle it because it just basically just backs right up and then I end up with a stomach ache and it's unpleasant, like altogether unpleasant. Um, so things like, like garlic bread, I can't do garlic bread. It just, instantly creates nausea. Like it just, it's a horrible feeling. Um, I can eat pizza, I can eat bread, mm, sort of bread, toast. I can eat some toast, um, but garlic bread for whatever reason, just, I don't know if it's the butter or the garlic or just all the combination, it just will not sit with like, sit well with me. Same with pasta, I can eat small amounts of pasta, um, but it makes me really full really fast. So if I'm going to eat any sort of pasta, I prefer to do like orzo um, because it's not that much. Um, whereas like I've made lasagnas during lockdown and I can only eat like a tiny bit of it and then it's just too heavy. It kind of sits like a rock in my stomach. Um, anything that has too much butter in it, like buttered popcorn or like butter based sauces, anything like that they'll go down and they'll stay down, but then the next day, oh, they make a hasty retreat for my body and it's unpleasant. We'll just put it that way. Uh, so I tend to stay away from that kind of stuff. Now I've been baking like my life depends on it. Like it's my bloody job, but I rarely eat what I bake. I just enjoy the act of cooking. I enjoy the act of like seeing ingredients mixed together and create something new out of it. So I just actually got a stand mixer delivered today, which is so exciting and it's so beautiful and it's blue and I love it. And I wanted one for absolutely ages. And now I have one. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll figure it out. Um, but I don't like, I no longer basically make myself eat just because it's there, if that makes sense. Like I would eat well past the point of being full just because I enjoyed the act of eating or even if there was stuff that I wasn't like super wild on, I'm like, mm, but it's here, I may as well eat it. I don't do that anymore. And the foods that like, like if you told me a year ago that I could never eat like garlic bread again, I would have just been like, I'll fight you. 
I, I need that. Um, and now it's because it hurts my stomach, like I just, I just have an aversion to it. Like I don't miss it. I don't regret that I can't eat it. I'm just kind of like, mm, okay, well, strike that one off the list. And I don't even think about it. It's an amazing feeling to just not wake up thinking about what you're going to be binging on that day. Because that's, I went to sleep thinking about all the crap that I'd eaten during that day and hating it. And then overnight sort of resetting and in the morning I'm like, what am I going to eat today? Uh, and it was never like, hmm, let's eat salad. It was like, okay, am I going to eat ketchup chips or salt and vinegar chips? Like it just, and it never ended. It was such a cycle and I'm so, I'm just so happy to be away from that. Like it no longer rules my life. I watch a ton of cooking content now on YouTube. And like I said, I bake like basically every day. Like as soon as one dessert is done, I'm like, okay, I'm going to bake another one now. Um, and I'm baking like muffins and stuff like that as well. And, but I'm also like roasting chickens and doing shit that I've never done before, but I'm really, really happy that I'm there. Anyways, um, all that to say, I'm very glad that I have developed a much healthier attitude towards food and eating. And that is like the very reason for having this surgery. It's, it's not, and everybody that has it will tell you, and every doctor that I've encountered will tell you, it's not a magic wand, it's a tool. It is a stepping stone, a means to an end, and you still have to put in the work. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for this tool because it's allowed me to change my way of thinking about food and to get into this point where I am a hundred pounds less. I can go running. I can go to the gym when it's safe to do so, all that kind of stuff. And not only can I, but I want to. And now I'm at the point um, in this weight loss sort of journey, if you will, where I now have to work for it. Like the weight isn't just falling off the way it did for the first six months, I'd say. But I have such a healthier perspective on food now that I, I now feel so much more confident in my abilities to do so because it's not just the weight loss that's motivating me now. Now it's like, okay, well, the next time I run, I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to run for four minutes. And then the run after that, there's a five minute interval and it's working towards something and it's just seeing, can this program work for me? Can I actually get to the point where like the last day of week eight, I'm running 35 minutes consecutively. Can I actually do that? Because right now, I don't think I can. I don't know. Five minutes sounds scary. I think I can do the four minutes because I can do the three with these. Five minutes is intimidating. 35? That seems impossible. Um, but if I follow the program, I will likely get there. And so that's like I have new means of motivation and... Oh, I'm just so grateful. So, uh, lips. Oh, crap. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go with something super, super easy and just go for a lip gloss. I talked myself into a corner and now I don't know where I was at. <laughs> so, editing might be a little glitchy here, but let me just power through. I am going to do a live stream at some point, probably within a day or two of this video going up, um, where I'll do like an ask me anything kind of deal, where if you have any questions about my experience, my recovery, my motivations, my like anything to do with gastric bypass and life after, feel free to join in and ask whatever questions. Um, and nothing's off topic, like whatever you want to ask, I'm happy to answer. And if I feel uncomfortable, then I won't answer it. Like whatever. <laughs> But, um, so look for that. I will announce it on my community page, um, probably the same day or the day after I post this. I have no idea when I'm going to post this. I'm filming it on a Wednesday and I'm doing a live stream tonight, so I won't get to edit it until probably tomorrow is my guess at the earliest, obviously. So anyways, that being said, I hope, I hope that this was somewhat interesting um, I am very rusty at filming at this point. Um, hopefully I'll get back into some sort of routine, but I wanted to share that with you. I'm just, I'm so, I think grateful is the word for it. I'm just so grateful. I'm so 
happy that I did this for myself. And I'm just so, so thrilled. I, I can't wait to see what the next six months holds for me. I, I'm just so excited. Anyways, I am going to wrap this video up here because I feel it's probably monstrously long at this point. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Thank you so much for your support, not only in my weight loss journey, but here in my YouTube journey as well. And just on a personal basis, like just thank you so much. You have no idea how much your words of encouragement mean to me. I just, I really feel like there's a friendship here and I really appreciate all of you and your support. I will see you guys in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.